Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to try and keep you awake uh, in the conference. Uh, I've got some slides. I want to try and um, give you an idea of the global digital goods market. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some trends, some forecasts at the end. But what I want you to understand is that everything is driven by the consumer what devices they use, how they consume digital content, which types of digital content they use. And I'm going to talk you through some of that analysis. And we're going to use some data based on surveys that we've been doing for the past 10 years. Um, so Forrester Research, for those that don't know, is a global organization. And we, d we cover um, uh, 21 countries in the world. Uh, going from North America to Latin America to Asia Pacific to Europe. And what we do is we ask questions around digital goods uh, users, how they use it, what are their attitudes. Um, we saw piracy. Piracy just doesn't exist in this country, it exists everywhere. And I'm going to show you some graphs uh, that show you that. So uh, I'm going to, if you like, give you some background of the trends that we're seeing. And I'm going to uh, try and use uh, not too many words on my slides, but I wanted this one just to say, what is a digital goods buyer? Now, when we do surveys, we have to be very exact on how we interpret the data. So what we say is that a digital goods buyer is someone who buy, buys video, games, um, music, and books. Uh, and they will have done so over the past three months online. Okay, so that's our digital goods buyer. And then from that moment on, we can start to analyze how they differ from other types of buyers. So um, this is a framework that I think is very useful, right? Um, there are two types of ways you can look at the user. You can say, who uses my digital goods? So these are the people who consume music, who listen to digital music, who play games. And then you've got the people who are prepared to pay for digital goods. And the two are very different. So for example, take, the, take newspapers as an example. Newspapers have been declining in North America, in Europe, for the past five to ten years. Um, they get most of their revenue from advertising. So you've either got advertising-led newspapers or you've got circulation-led newspapers for specialist um, magazines, for example. And for the advertising-led, they typically get 40 to 60% of their revenue from advertising. So as soon as the circulation drops, their revenue drops. Um, and digital goods is not going to change that for newspapers. Um, it's going to help you get digital share, but there's still, if you like, an overreaching uh, uh, understanding of how newspapers are going to, if you like, reinvigorate themselves. Uh, we've got games. Um, you've got obviously two types of games. You've got console games and you've got apps. Um, you know, the th Two thirds of the market is console games, and then you've got apps, which is a third of the market. And what we're seeing is that obviously there's an age demographic there for the audience. But what about the payers? The payers, what we're going to see is that 90% of the revenues, 80 to 90% of the revenues, are coming from in app spend. Uh, we've also got video and the challenge to pay TVs. So, um, Internet TV, internet video, how does it challenge the pay TV providers in the United States, for example, where we've got very high levels of pay TV ownership? And we're going to see that it's a non-trivial, it's a non-trivial uh, equation. And then, obviously, music um, and the fact that um, um, uh, we've got uh, a cannibalization of the music industry by piracy, etc. So here is uh, a graph. Uh, which shows tablet adoption in the various countries. And hopefully you'll get the slides so you'll be able to uh, see this uh, in more detail. But, but it, the growth in digital consumption is driven by devices. There are two key devices, the smartphones and there are tablets. If we look at both of those, you can see that the 36% figure is a 2012 uh, figure. And we're going to go up to about 60% in North America. That means that 60% of online users will have a tablet by 2016, 2017. This 
forecast uh, we're updating at the moment and it seems to be true. There's nothing to suggest that this forecast is wrong. We look at shipment data, we look at the behaviour of tablet users. What you need to know about tablet users is they consume more digital content than PC and laptop users relative to uh, device ownership. So, for example, if you asked a tablet user um, how often do they uh, download digital goods online, 30% of them will say they do it uh, on a weekly basis uh, or, or, or a weekly or monthly basis. Whereas if you do that on a, a laptop and a PC, it goes down to 20%. So tablets are entertainment-driven devices. So that's important. So the other thing that's important is smartphones have got a similar type of curve. Perhaps they're a little bit more advanced in the sense that we're going to see a stabilisation of smartphone growth um, over time a bit, a bit earlier. So the other uh, thing that is important is that digital goods users are advanced online users. So this graph shows the number of devices they use to consume digital goods. So we asked online users um, which devices they use. So we've got, um, this is the online population. And what we can see is that... Um, in Russia, for example, we've got over 50% use more than one device to consume digital content. So that means that um, digital users are device agnostic. They expect their content to work on their tablet, on their smartphone, on their laptop. They, they almost don't care what device they're using. They just want the content. Um, the other uh, thing that's important is to compare tablet ownership with smartphone ownership. And you can see that there's a different dynamics of a, of a tablet owner compared to a smartphone owner. Um, so you've got play games online, read electronic books. Um, you can see that watching video and reading electronic books is not or less popular on a smartphone than on a tablet. Um, and it's because of screen size. If you, do, if you look at um, phablets, for example, um, they're changing the dynamics of the tablet landscape where people might not get a smartphone. They might just get a, a bigger device between tablets uh, and, and smartphones. Um, so uh, this is an important uh, understanding of how people are changing uh, their behaviours. So the other thing that's important about tablet users is that most of them of, of the tablet use is at home, right? Uh, whereas smartphone use is on the go. And we also know that three quarters of tablets are not cellular uh, enabled, they tend to be Wi Fi enabled. So that then changes the dynamics of the type of contents that people are going to be consuming. Um, one other aspect is to uh, compare uh, different operating systems. Now, uh, I know in Russia um, that Apple is not uh, as popular um, as other operating systems, purely maybe because of price. Um, I know that um, Samsung and Nokia uh, are um, uh, popular handsets uh, in, in Russia. But this is an important uh, thing to understand because your users will have different uh, idea of digital content, how they consume digital content, based on the operating system um, that, uh, that they have. In Russia, for example, in our latest survey, we had something like 43% of handset users in metropolitan Russia have a smartphone. So if you compare that to Europe, you're talking something like 60%. So uh, metropolitan Russia is catching up um, with, uh, with, with, with Europe, and, and we're going to start seeing this, uh, these different dynamics. Um, I know that the, uh, the Apple uh, device might be uh, expensive compared to the average salary, um, but um, um, it, it, it's important to understand these different, uh, the, these different usages. So now what I'd like to do is analyse the digital goods user. What do they do with their devices? Well, let's start with age. The demographics of a digital goods user is young. Um, here um, you can see that at the top there is 25 to 34. So I'm comparing digital goods users, uh, digital goods buyers uh, with Russia and the United States. So what we can see is that there's a similar trend that the digital goods user is young. The other thing that's important 
is that the non-digital goods buyer uh, in, in, in Russia and the digital goods buyer, they're, they're quite similar uh, in terms of demographic profile of age. In other words, the people who buy online are, tend to be young, tend to be um, technology optimists. Um, and in the United States, as an example, you've got more of a distinction between what's happening from a digital perspective and what's happening from an online buyer perspective. And online buyers um, are very important. Um, and if you're saying that your digital users are advanced, uh, advanced online buyers, then that is important. So um, let's consider um, digital goods buyers and the fact that a digital goods buyer will not buy uniquely digital goods. They will also buy physical goods. So you need to understand that there's a transition between going from purely physical to digital goods. And so here is a graph of a digital goods buyer that buys digital products, and on the other axis is a digital goods buyer that buys physical products. And what we can see very clearly and this is for metropolitan China um, and uh, metropolitan India, so two new countries. Um, what you can see is that digital goods buyers, once they've started down the digital route, they tend to favour the digital goods route for buying music, video, etc. So that's an important aspect, is that once you've captured your audience... They, they tend to uh, develop uh, these behaviours over time um, uh, longer. So uh, the other uh, thing that's important is digital goods buyers are more active online users. So what do we mean by more active online users? In our survey, what we looked at is we looked at the number of categories that an online user would buy. So physical categories in, in, in online retail, um, and digital categories as well. And we, we looked, what we noticed was digital goods users buy a lot more categories online than non-digital goods users. So this is, again, further evidence that the digital goods user is an advanced user. So here, again, you can see that the non-digital goods buyer who buys physical products and the digital goods buyer who buys physical products, um, you can see that the digital goods user will, um, will, will, will um, favour buying digital goods and they'll, be, they'll buy more products online as well. So here, you know, you've got digital, uh, digital goods users that buy uh, physical goods online. They buy more of them. So again, uh, you've probably got a demographics of income, a demographics of age. You've probably got a, a, dem a demographics of education as well. So it's important to understand um, your digital goods users and the fact that they are advanced buyers. Um, this is a slide that um, combines external uh, data uh, around trends in the music industry. For example, um, um, a quote from the IFPA um, said that 30% um, um, of internet users in Europe accessed unlicensed services that offer music content. So again, um, piracy is still an issue within the music industry. And so when you then plot audience, which is potentially the size of the people you can influence, which would relate to advertising spend, etc., with payers, what you get is an interesting concept. So this, on, on one side, is the percentage of the audience um, that pays, and on the other side is the uh, percentage um, of, of the audience that actually consumes the content. So, for example, um, we've got uh, news um, we've got a very high audience, and video, we've got a very high audience. Now, for video, it's normal that you've got a high audience because as um, TV becomes digitalised and video becomes digitalised, what we're going to see is an audience that converges towards the television market. So in Europe, in America, 95% um, plus watch TV regularly. What we're, we're going to see by 2017 is that's going to be the same for online content, online digital content. So this is just the audience. So you can see that the video audience is very important. For news, again, a lot of people watch the news. Um, the, the, the interesting thing about the news is it tends to be um, linked to age. So a lot of people who buy newspapers tend to be slightly older. The younger generation, maybe uh, they consume digital content or they get their, new, their, their news content for free. So 
the other aspect then you can see straight away, this is the percentage of the audience that pays. What can you see? You can see that news is potentially problematic. People expect news to be free. And that's one of the reasons why um, uh, it, it's a challenge for newspapers. Again, newspapers get a lot of their, um, their added value through a quality aggregation or quality editorial, the way they interpret the news, the way they aggregate the news. And, and sometimes people just aren't prepared to pay for that because they can get it free online. If you compare, so this is comparing Europe to um, um, the US, what we can see for music, for example, is the percentage of the audience that pays in the US, which is the green, is a lot higher than in Europe. And that corresponds to the 30% of internet users in Europe that accessed unlicensed services that offer digital content. So by looking at the survey data, by looking at the behaviours of people, we can, we can try and figure out how the, the audience is changing and how the buyer population is also changing. So, some trends in the digital goods market. So this is the US, and I think it's an interesting uh, slide. Um, US music sales um, have uh, almost halved because of um, piracy, digital uh, goods, etc. But now you can see it's stabilizing, right? So that's important, right? Uh, piracy is starting to become under control in the US and uh, more globally. So uh, uh, music is starting to look healthy. In fact, it, it showed its first growth uh, uh, for, uh, for many years. Um, the other interesting part in the US is that in 2011, 50% of music consumption was digital. In 2012, 59% of music consumption was digital. So again, the trend is extremely fast. A third point around this graph is that subscription-based music services are growing also very quickly. Uh, you've, got, you've got Spotify, uh, you've got Rhapsody, um, you've, you've, you've got uh, um, uh, digital radio. Um, people are prepared to pay for um, um, subscription-based services. And if you actually plot that on there, um, the, the, the figure that is often used is that 15% of the music spend is from subscription-based services uh, in the US, which would include... Um, um, paid content and also advertising content. Um, so again, uh, uh, subscription-based services in music is becoming very popular. Um, if we look at books, what's uh, interesting, so that the biggest digital market for books at the moment is the United States of America, which has about 21% of, um, of the market, um, of, of the book market. Uh, is digital, um, and so uh, you can see that um, we've got um, we've got Europe uh, is it has the lion's share of the book market, um, um, and so what we're going to see in the future is that they're going to grow uh, um, to 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 capture the the largest share of the digital book market. Um, uh, again, uh, we can see that music uh, and books uh, trend uh, the same. This is a, sh a slide from external data that looks at the percentage of digital um, um, compared to uh, uh, classical digital share, um, cl uh, vid video share. Um, in terms of freemium uh, apps, freemium is uh, dominating. Uh, as you can see by country, freemium apps are the thing that, that dominates. And what people pay per app also uh, is changing. So you need to understand the demographics of, your, of, of each country. Um, I'm just going to go quickly through some, the forecast, some of the key parameters. So you'll have this in your slide deck. So it's the number, it, it's the operating system share, it's the freemium share, it's the share of the in-app spend, um, which is important and how to monetize that going forward. This is a graph of one of our forecasts, and it's showing that digital revenues are growing at 25%. If you compare that to online, um, the online e-forecast in, in Europe, it's growing at between um, 10 to 12%. So it's growing twice as fast as uh, the, online, uh, the online market. Um, this is uh, almost the last slide. Uh, again, 
we're looking at audience. Audience is important because it matters to advertisers. We can see video is very important, news uh, and music as well, uh, and games uh, less so uh, in terms of audience. And this is the last slide. This shows you that how the digital books are going to behave over time. We saw that Germany uh, is, is the second biggest digital book market, or book market in the world. We're going to see growth specifically in Germany, in France, and in, in the UK. And we're going to see um, that uh, they're going to become the biggest uh, book market in the world. So just some key takeaways. takeaways. Digital goods users are device agnostic. We, sh we showed it. Um, digital goods users um, buy a range of goods, digital and non-digital goods. And they, once they've started to buy digital, they favor digital goods. Digital goods users buy international goods. A lot of the games, the top 10 games that people play in Russia are from international publishers. Um, and the other last point is you've got to know your customer. You've got to know their demographics, what they want um, to be able to target them. Thank you, Michael.